So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video where we are going to discuss about the job opportunities that you have in Netherlands with a specific focus on management of technology because I have with me Aveen. If you have not seen the first video, then go and check the first video in the info card where we mentioned about Aveen's background and what uh, was his experience of being a student in TU Delft MOT from 2017 to 2019. In this video, we'll start with uh, the job opportunities that you have in MOT in Netherlands. So off to you, Avin, with the first question, like what are the job opportunities for masters in MOT in Netherlands? Yeah, thanks, Ambit. So management of technology, uh, also known as MOT, opens a lot of doors uh, in consulting or uh, organizational functional roles. Uh, many go into consulting roles because of its uh, high nature of problem solving uh, jobs, uh, possibly to be a generalist over a period of time. And of course, it works seeing on various number of projects and clients. And therefore, they choose the, as a consulting roles in various companies such as KPMG, Deloitte, Accenture, EY, and also other tech, com tech consulting companies. Uh, other people join organizations, uh, multinational corporations like me uh, working in Philips, or also even small and medium scale enterprises uh, to very specific commercial or techno commercial functional jobs, such as in project management, operations, logistics, innovation procurement, supply chain, and also even marketing for that matter, uh, which also has the same nature of high problem solving, but sometimes sometimes even it's more operational and therefore it's more of an organizational role. Uh, for internationals, uh, expats, uh, especially Indians, uh, many of the Indians work for multinational corporations and also SMEs. Uh, opportunities are always posted online as recruitment happens through this medium, such as Indeed.com or LinkedIn. Uh, I actually personally have made a separate webinar on best practices uh, to locate and target opportunities with applications specifically given to TUDELF engineers. Okay, so we'll also leave that link of that video, which you'll be seeing flashing on the screen on the description below. And yeah, thank you. So let's go to the next question. Which companies do someone look out for in MOT? Well, the, the, in MOT students, in general, they look at various sectors. So in general, aerospace, banking, chemicals, conglomerates, consulting, electronics, even technology, industrial goods, telecommunication. There are so many industries where MOT students are able to work, uh, especially given their specific bachelor's background. Uh, for every specific company, the jobs are specialist in nature, unless, unless it's a traineeship which is a one or two year program uh, where student experiences a lot of uh, functions and then it understands you know, the various attributes, behaviors, skills required and develops into a specific uh, specialized job. So therefore opportunities are unlimited, but based on your background, I believe it's very good to specifically choose industries and sectors where you can really leverage your actual technical background with MOT. Okay, so when did you start applying for the jobs? Like what is the ideal time that one should maybe start applying for jobs during masters? Yeah, so I think the job application part is uh, the easiest part throughout the whole journey. Uh, it's ironical to say that, but preparation to apply for these jobs takes a lot of time in my experience. So this is something a lot of people quite often miss that. Uh, they think that they will start applying just three, four months before their graduation. But that's usually the wrong notion because it delays the time to actually get a job. Because uh, from, a, from a specific job opportunity to interview to setting up your contract itself is around two months or three months. And therefore, you would spend a lot of time in self fixing a job. So the first process is to scout for through a funnel of opportunities present, you know, the industries and companies and sectors you would like to work for. Over the, two per over the period of two years, you have a lot of opportunities to, you know, to gain knowledge of, about a job type or industry type through interactions and peer-to-peer -peer learning. 
Therefore, it is highly recommended that second year master students in their second year, the start of the second year, must start looking into various companies or industry or sectors they like to actually work for. And that's when you understand the various jobs. And of course, you will know when to apply for a job and when not to apply for a job. Okay. So moving on to the next question, what should be the three, four key points that everyone should keep in their mind before starting a job search or during the job search? Yeah. Uh, I think uh, one of the top things which come to my mind is the end process. So uh, seldom are times when people are given jobs because of luck or pure credentials. Uh, interviews are great, you know, uh, ultimate testing grounds for recruiters to see a genuine mutual match between the employer and the employee, which is the student. So a job research is very important in the second year, be it industry or academia. Uh, if you're applying for a PhD position, you also might have to really understand what kind of attributes, behaviors they expect for you to have. Same way also to an industry. So as mentioned in the webinar in the link below, it's uh, the mapping out the companies through industries and sectors and job types uh, through indeed.com or LinkedIn gets you an understanding of what is actually needed in the market as to what universities are uh, actually teaching you because usually they are way ahead of in terms of thinking. Uh, there are exceptional companies like ASML, NXP, Philips, certain banks, other technical companies who are cutting edge uh, research. So key is to uh, job research in the second year of your master's. Also to remember, you have to acknowledge that job search is a bit of a lonely process. So there might be counselors who can help you, uh, guide you, uh, also seniors who can guide you. However, despite these great benefits, you know, you can get a lot of information from them. You have to prepare to develop the knowledge required uh, to get into the market uh, since you're uh, starting your second year. So that's very crucial, uh, I believe, uh, because end of the day, you are going to uh, get a job and you will have to go through the process. Um, usually employers look for a mutual fit, which is uh, quite a unique thing here, at least what I've experienced. Uh, employers only don't look if they match, you know, uh, the job to you, but you have to also match to the company and the norms and cultures. For example, like in, in India, if you say if you're working for 10, 12 hours per day, giving it its best uh, and I really work hard and I can do everything. In Asian culture, in general, is appreciated well, but not here. So they really look down upon you when you say that you're going to work 12 hours per day. So that's a, an example. A lot of people uh, feel that their superiors would have, people who have actually worked in India would actually be able to resonate to what I've said. Okay. So what advice do you, would you like to give to applicants who want to apply for jobs in Netherlands? Yeah, this is a it's a it's a, it's a whole huge concept. Uh, a lot of uh, there's a lot of practices around this. Some of the best practices I've actually put in the webinar, uh, which I had already shared earlier. It should trigger a lot of uh, aspects, uh, and people will learn from there, and they don't want scab up. You know. Okay, so go and expand the description and don't ask like, where is it? Check in the description, everything is there. And uh, yeah, so does previous work experience help when applying for jobs? Like if you have uh, maybe work experience before starting masters or yeah. yeah. So th the relevant experience definitely helps you. Uh, but any good work experience in general helps as after all you're exposed to the professional world. Uh, personally, it has helped me a lot to do a lot of uh, functions, uh, especially gain uh, multiple internships and also yeah, work for my, one of my dream companies that is Philips. So that really helps a lot. In general, work experience does help, but not necessarily. Okay. So how important is knowing Dutch when applying for jobs? Is Dutch CV necessary? Is there interview in Dutch, like in some companies or most companies? Yeah, 
I mean, as an expat, uh, mastering the Dutch language in two years is very rare uh, amidst the coursework you have and most of the learning curve you have. Um, ideally, one should acknowledge that Dutch may not be a strong point, but of course, focus on every other aspect of the application. You can only do so much so, right? So influence what is in your circle of influence. So I don't know Dutch, but I was able to build a track record, or at least in a short time, to score internships and also a good job. Uh, but if you apply for positions that are in Dutch or mentioned requires Dutch proficiency, the interview will also obviously be in Dutch because uh, they will expect the person to have Dutch knowledge to communicate and also write. In some cases, there are very unique uh, exceptions where they are requested to take Dutch courses on every Friday afternoon onwards. So that is part of the company's expense. And I think in a year or two years time, they expect you to know basic Dutch uh, because of the job requirement, especially in consulting firms. So I know a couple of people who have gone through it. So that could be uh, one way of actually, uh, even though you don't know Dutch, you can still uh, get to a firm uh, which is mainly Dutch, still without Dutch. So. Okay. Yeah. So even in like IT based jobs or computer science, if you do computer science based on my experience, uh, most of the jobs are in English. So that's not an issue more or less for applying for jobs like to know Dutch. So moving on to the next question, based on your experience, do you think is there any preference given to the applicants when they're applying for jobs? Uh, if they live, I mean, if they speak Dutch or if they have lived in Netherlands before, like for example, someone is maybe like lived here for two, three years after master's and uh, then applying for jobs or maybe he's a Dutch citizen. Is there any preferential treatment or something that you have ever experienced? Like, Yeah, I mean, I've made a couple of applications before I got a job at Philips. And of course, it is uh, preferred that if you speak Dutch, you are preferred over a non-Dutch person. Uh, and also, if you have lived in the Netherlands as an expat, uh, you applying for the same job as a fresher would apply from the university would definitely be preferred. Uh, it's just the same way of how you speak Tamil in Tamil Nadu or Malayalam in Kerala or Hindi in North India. One is able to connect to people uh, much more than the second language of English. So there's definitely a preference. But uh, of course, you can make a lot of strong points in your application, in your profile, which can make you stand unique. Yeah, very good point. Very good advice. So any important websites that you want to refer, uh, which can help in this job process? Uh, we'll obviously leave the links in the description, but anything that comes to your mind very quickly, like any websites yeah. or something like that. Well, there are a couple of websites which are for expats. So iamexpat.nl is a great website where people understand a lot of expats uh, from, uh, they come to Netherlands to work and in search of job as well. So there's a lot of tips and tricks and guides and uh, known facts such as uh, salaries or wages or opportunities, living in cities, experiences being shared in the website. So that is a really good website. I found it personally helpful. Uh, but that's uh, at the top of my mind, that is one good website. And uh, there are other news websites which, which also gives you local knowledge, like dutchnews.nl or, uh, for example, Wolfstrap. So depends upon which uh, website or what you're looking for. But I am expert.nl is a great website for starters. Okay. So, yeah, so most people ask this question, like what is the salary range that they can expect when they like find a job or work yeah. in a company? So this has to be given in two perspectives. So I'll give one perspective of actual salary ranges. Uh, so TUDEL graduates on average get around 35,000 to 38,000 euros per year for freshers. Uh, for experience role, they can negotiate a bit higher based on the relevant experience they have. Uh, Glassdoor is a great example to check job positions and their salaries uh, because uh, since uh, taxes are quite high, of course, for our own good, uh, a 38,000 euro per year gross salary would translate 
which is actually 28,000 euros per month gross, uh, would translate about 22,000, uh, so 2,200 uh, to 2,300 euros in net income. Uh, usually professionals, young professional engineers spend around 1,000 to 1,300 euros per month as overheads, living, food, drinks, uh, socializing, etc., etc. And thereby they save about 1,000 to 1,200 euros on a monthly basis, uh, which can be used to uh, repay their loan payments. Uh, the second aspect would be in general that salaries are a bit lower compared to what it is in North America, usually in Canada or US. Because once you get a job, especially a permanent contract within the company, the risk of you getting laid off is quite low compared to where you would have in North America or if perhaps even in India for that matter. The Dutch laws are quite strict in that way because unless they really have a business issue which creates a turmoil, they're not supposed to fire employees without a valid reason or cost-cutting measures. Therefore, in a way, the job is also secure and the risks are a bit lower and therefore that is translating your salary. But it's one of the best countries to work and live in, in, uh, in Europe. So I, I wouldn't, I'm, I'm really happy with where I am right now. Okay. Okay. I can totally agree. Like the job security is really good uh, over here. And uh, moving on to the final point, any advice or tips that you want to give for searching jobs, uh, job opportunities in Netherlands? Yeah. So you have to have the growth mindset and not a fixed mindset. It's a very, be very proactive and take genuine interest in learning about the market through various mediums available. Uh, some of the uh, best practices have been shared in my uh, webinar. and uh, I've used this and I've also seen many people do it and they've also successfully found the right jobs. So I think that's the uh, only tip or, uh, or broad tip I could give uh, people who are looking for opportunities in that way. Okay. Uh, thank you, Avin, for this uh, wonderful explanation about the job opportunities in Netherlands uh, spe with specific focus in MOT. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so before we end the video, if you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you have not subscribed, share this video so that everyone knows and it reaches to many people. And uh, in the next video, we are going to discuss about uh about the job experience an expat can have or indian can have in netherlands uh, basically relating it with avin's experience of working in netherlands till now in philips so the next video uh, so see you in the next video till then bye